How's it going guys? Sorry about the delay from my last video. I'd like to say that I've been busy, but I really haven't. I've just been procrastinating, playing games, and streaming over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash... twitch.tv forward slash Goblin Live with the H. Remember the H. The time's finally here. I'm, it's been a long time since... The, actually, I don't know how long it's been since I did the last video. But we're finally going to be painting the Auric Megaboss. But anyway, with the intro out of the way, let's just let's just crack on and begin. Okay, so the paint I'm using is from the Army Painter, a popular alternative to Games Workshop's expensive Citadel paints. We're going to start off with his head and face, and this is actually the first time that I'm painting parts separately. Usually I'd glue the whole model together just because I could display it before painting it, but I've decided I'm going to try and start making a habit of this, and in this example, it would make it much easier for me to paint his tongue and also the skin under his armour. Now let me just clarify, I'm not a professional, in fact I've only been into miniatures for a couple of years and I've only painted about 10 models in total, so don't see this as a tutorial, see it more as you and me learning together. Like Bob Ross or something, well actually no Bob Ross is a professional isn't he? Never mind! The colours I've chosen for his head are Goblin Green for the undercoat, Soft Tone for the wash, and Scaly Hide for the highlights. As you can see by this awkward camera angle, I'm still working out the best way to film these videos. The last video was a nightmare to edit because it was just one continuous clip I had to sync up, and I don't want to put myself through that ever again, so this time I've been taking clips so that I can provide a voiceover afterwards. Anyway, as you can see, I began applying the undercoat of Goblin Green but I've made two mistakes. First of all, I should have done his teeth first, and secondly, I watered down the paints under the recommendation of many other YouTubers. I don't think these paints need watering down, honestly. I think they're fine as they are. After I finished the undercoat, I went onto the teeth using the colour Mummy Robes. Once I finished the teeth, I moved on to the wash. The last step for the head was to scaly hide highlights. I used a dry brush technique to hit all the upper areas where the light would catch and then highlight the very tops and edges to make it pop. Finally, I very carefully added some red to the eyes, and with this done, the head was complete. Now onto the tongue. The colours I used were Dragon Red for the undercoat, Soft Tone for the wash, and Warlock Purple for the highlights. This part was very simple and needs no in-depth explanation. I just used the same process as I used on the head, undercoat, wash, highlight. And with that, I was ready to move on to the main course, the armour. At the time of recording this, I haven't actually started the army yet, and to be honest I feel quite daunted about it, but I think it's worth saying that anyone who feels this way, uh, you should just push on through. Don't even bother worrying about the finished product, just, just get on with it, and you know, maybe you'll surprise yourself. Okay, so here we go, this is the big part, the bit that I'm not feeling too confident about to be honest, but let's just, let's just push on through and, you know, maybe we'll be surprised. Also today, I received this nice little magnifying glass light thing, which is a lot better than using the head torch I was having on before, that was just ridiculous. I had my head torch on and above that I had my no pro, my fake GoPro. But anyway, we're going to start off with Demonic Yellow and Soft Tone. Soft Tone, as you can probably tell, it's very versatile and I love it. I use it all the time for lots of things, many things. Applying yellow to a black base coat is not the easiest thing to do. 
Um, it takes many layers, and while I was doing this coat is when I realised that I really need to, you know, not assemble it as much as I have. Trying to get into all those little areas was not an easy task on top of the fact that I had to build up the layers. So definitely next model I do, I'm, I'm going to paint it in parts, so yeah. So after much, much effort, I finally got a base layer on. It's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be because the wash is what's going to really bring it out. And um, yeah, I don't think it looks too bad. It took me a long time to get into all the little nooks and crannies and whatnot, but I did it. So next up, all we have to do is put some green on his arms and everything and then go through with the wash. So with the wash now complete, I think I might add some highlights later, either with silver or white, but I don't want it to be too overbearing. It needs to be subtle, so maybe I'll save that until last. But let's now move on to the final parts. At first, I tried mixing together some dark stone and ultramarine blue, but this didn't give me the colour I was looking for. So instead, I used deep blue and added wash, not just to bring the details out, but to darken the tone as well. I used the wash after adding silver for the chainmail and then washed the chainmail and the plates all together. Then it was time for some fine details. I used shining silver again and very carefully added some edge highlights. I'm not great at doing this, but I gave it my best and hopefully it looks okay. I decided to change the colour of one of the armour pieces, so I quickly made that adjustment before moving on to the bones. For the base coat, I chose mummy robes. After the base coat, I applied a wash of, you guessed it, soft tone. Again, this both brought out the detail and darkened the tone. To finish off the bones, I dry brushed some dark stone around certain areas. With that done, the bones were complete, and then I glued on the head. Now it was time to add the final details. After dry brushing silver onto the axe head and adding more highlight detail to the bones and armour, I was finally finished. There we have it guys, we've finally painted our Auric Mega Boss and it's looking pretty good, you know, if I do say so myself. I'm particularly proud of the Dragon Skull, is it? I think it's a Dragon Skull. Maybe a baby Dragon Skull, because I don't know. So if you'd like to see more, um, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that like button as well. Also check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash goblin live. And I, I stream more than I post, so if you want to find me, ask me some questions or whatever, you'll find me on there. 
Thanks ever so much for watching, and I'll see you next time, hopefully. Peace off.